Bepo ama tentará eta, burubicha eta, queren penche, ayerobia, pecuite, pecuite peai. I have decided, decided to start my conference in Guarani. The language, the talk, a lot of people in the south of Bolivia, in the Chaco Boliviano, and because really uh, these people is the people that suffer the Chagas diseases and they are living with a lot of problems in this area. Um, and I could like really to, to do a homage to all the people that live in the same condition like the Guarani people and in other places in the world. I was worried uh, this afternoon because I, I have to confess you that I sound very bad, I play basket very bad, and I speak English very bad. <laughs> and well, I would like really that you understand me, my feelings, my dreams, my fight. And I decide uh, to, to read because probably you will understand better my life and I want exactly, I want to explain you. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. I am a scientist, in fact, a doctor in chemistry. I first specialized in metal corrosion. Not very poetic, I know. However, it led me to Israel in 1993, where I was fortunate enough to get to know and live amongst a wide variety of people with different religious beliefs to mine. Jews, Muslim, Orthodox, Copts. Many of them are now good friends of mine. My research was to take me to the field of public health with a view to controlling all types of arthropods. In other words, I am a bug exterminator. Say like this, I know, it doesn't sound very elegant, but if I were to tell you that my knowledge of polymer has allowed me to develop a technology based on biopolymeric microencapsulation in s fly, which can control insects which transmit endemic diseases such as malaria, dinghy, or chagas, then maybe now I have aroused your curiosity. Divine Providence disposed that this technology should not end up in European countries, but rather in Bolivia with the Guarani people. From there, it spread to other Latin American countries and then to Africa. Without realizing, began to have an international profile at a small scale. Once again, this allowed me to interact with very different people from very different places from around the world. The sociology of the indigenous world is a completely different story. There is a more direct contact with nature, and there is a religious syncretism which is difficult to understand from a Western point of view. There exists a certain poetic wisdom which has nothing to do with science and which interprets life as the need to respect the environment, namely La Pachamama. It doesn't matter if La Pachamama is cruel to them and brings triato mines and mosquitoes which infect them. I am going to share with you some very moving examples of this which I have experienced. Bolivia, summer of 98. Some Guaranis have been forced through the seat to leave their lines. There is no sign of protest, but one of those affected is overheard saying, Poor man, when he dies, he will be eternally sad because he has no soul. Poetic wisdom of a justice. Colombia, October 2000. The Cogis Indians who live in Sierra Nevada at more than 4,000 meters of altitude began to suffer from illnesses transmitted by a mosquito. When they tried to convince their chief that it would be convenient to take action to eliminate these insects, the chief remained silent. After a few minutes, he requests a couple of months so that he can ponder his decision. 
the reason being that he needed to talk to La Pachamama, Mother Nature. We asked the translator to ask him why. So, that Mother Nature can give me permission to take action, but no before the mosquitoes have been able to live before the treatment is carried out. And what happens if the mosquitoes do not live? Well, in that case, it will be their fault because they have been pre-warned. Poetic wisdom of the environment. Mexico, February 2004. The Purépecha leader, Lupita Hernández, is the first woman in her indigenous village to take the floor to address an auditorium of local authority and participants at an official event. Lupita spoke of poverty amongst women, of their unpaid work, of their lack of training. She doesn't attack anybody, but she makes it very clear to her people that awakening of the indigenous woman is inevitable. Poetic wisdom of feminism. The indigenous people in the world have this lack of training, but they are now realizing that without knowledge, emancipation is impossible. Personal and collective autonomy is paramount and the basis for the development of people. Once having dealt with health issues, then education becomes the key to survival. We all need to feel again. We need to realize that development without feelings, without values, without taking into consideration the human factor make us incomplete as person. My professional experience has led me over the last 20 years to understand two aspects, which I feel are key to Christianity. The universality of action and love for your fellow human beings, whoever they may be. When we talk about endemic diseases, we generally refer to very poor people who live in very poor countries. Disease and poverty are linked together. It took me years to understand this. I first thought I would be able to vaccinate their house and that that would solve the problems. But I was wrong. I had come across a reality with science alone could not solve because what was really killing the indigenous people was not only the insect and a lack of hygiene, but also hunger. Little by little, I began to incorporate housing improvements as well as hygiene and health training into my programs. Lastly, I started to deal with gender issues through the creation of professional workshops for women, which will allow them to find their place in a society which ignore them. There are extensive programs which seek to empower any potential beneficiaries. In other words, to increase the capacity for personal action. For this reason, solution which only look to find an antidote to cure disease, medicine, vaccines, tend to fall by the wayside. A poor person who has been vaccinated remains poor and consequently is still trapped in a vicious circle of poverty from which he or she cannot escape. The institution is a deep, dark hole in which can, one can enter easily but exit great difficulty. I am going to arouse your curiosity again. Insects, in general, and especially mosquitoes, have the virtue or defect, depending on the way you look at it, of not differentiating between people on the basis of their color, race, social status, nationality, gender, or creed. They just buy, suck blood, and without realizing, as part of their vital need, they make us all brothers and sisters. Whether we like it or not, we will all have probably received blood from somebody we do not know through their bites. 
We have also shared our blood with others. This basically means that mosquitoes are able to make us all equal as humans. Please don't be alarmed. I'm not going to release any mosquitoes like Bill Gates did to explain malaria. But the next time you are bitten by an insect, remember what I have just told you. I must confess to you that I feel fortunate to have blood brothers of different religions and races. Another point which I would also like to highlight is the following. If the Northern Hemisphere has been able to eradicate endemic diseases from their territories, then there are no reason why we should not eradicate them in the Southern Hemisphere. The insects are the same. What changes is the climate and the living condition. In the north, the warm season is shorter, and therefore, it is easier to control insects. In the south, the warmer climate makes it easier for insects to act almost all the year. Consequently, it is important to give products a more prolonged persistence. An action must be permanent. I honestly believe that this has been my small contribution to the world of chemistry applied to health. I also feel that religion should never be the subject of contention when seeking the common good. Above all, because if there is something which characterizes people who suffer the bites of these bugs, it's precisely a lack of dignity. Through my job, I have been able to hear the voice of the most oppressed and the need they have to recover their self-esteem and dignity. If I have to carefully choose a war which could help to join rather than separate people, then I will no doubt choose tolerance. In other words, a deep sense of respect for he or she who is not similar to us or who may not think the same as us. Ultimately, if there is only one God, then all the religions of the world are only path which leads to universal love. Well, as since this morning, you all know each other. I would like you to put this knowledge in action. And so I invite you first to hug each other, and then I would like with Gloria to come to be, to be together because I would like really that you understand very well, very well what the meaning to be everybody together to change the world. And I would love that you hold your hands, everybody, please, hold your hands. And I would like to transmit the energy together because together we can change the world. Gracias por subir, porque me hablo muy mal.